All right, so here we go. This is the most exciting part of this course, the menu commands. Menu commands like this are found in most applications. We have the file menu, which we can use to create a new document, open an existing document. We can view a list of our recent documents, which is really helpful. Place will let us place content into our composition. Let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna place in this brush with no background. If the image has a transparent background, you'll want to check retain alpha. You could set a size for the image to come in. Let's say we want it to be 25%. If you wanted to stretch it, you could choose to not constrain the aspect ratio, but most of the time you'll want to keep that checked. And we'll click on OK. Now that image is placed in at 25% of its original size. It's also a reference layer. That's indicated by the icon being different here in the layers palette. And that means that if I scale this larger or smaller, it's always going to maintain its original resolution. Unlike that image that we were transforming earlier where it got a little bit blocky or blurry when we made it larger and smaller, this one's going to remain crisp. This can be really useful if you're not sure what size you want something to be and you want to be able to modify it, or you could bring your line art in as a reference layer. If you wanted to, you could right click on this and convert it to a default layer, and then you could treat it like any other layer and blend on it, paint on it, and so on. Let's go to File. We can close our currently open document. We've already looked at how save and save as work, so we can skip over those. If you saved your artwork, then reverting it will revert it to its last save state. Page setup and print deal with printing. I'm not gonna go too in depth into printing in this course, but here's where you could print your artwork if you're printing at home. Then there's exit if you wanna close the application. So that's it for the file menu. Let's move on to the edit menu. We already looked at undo and redo. Let's check out fade. Now fade is useful if you've applied an effect. So let's go ahead and go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, and let's reset it and reduce the saturation. We'll click on OK. And now if I go to Edit Fade, I can fade between the previous state and the current state. So I can reduce that desaturation a bit. Let's go back to Edit. We have Cut, Copy, Paste in Place. Where do you know what those can do? Paste a new image will paste the content into a new image. This can be useful for isolating a layer into its own image. So for example, I could make a selection here and then I can copy it and go to edit, paste a new image. And that brings the artwork into a new image. I can go back to my other composition by going to the window menu. And here I can find that composition. I can also switch between my open compositions with control tab. I'll go ahead and close this one. You will notice when I paste into a new image, it merges those layers together. So that's just something to consider. I'll close this as well. We'll go back to edit. We have clear, which will clear the contents of that layer or whatever's within a selection. So for example, I could select only part of this brush and I could go to edit clear and just remove only those pixels. And then last in the edit menu are the preferences. We'll be coming back to these in the next lesson. Let's move on to the Canvas menu. I'm gonna open the foggy seascape artwork. And in the Canvas menu, we can resize our artwork. This particular image is 1200 by 706 pixels. So if we wanted to make it smaller, we could make it 600 pixels wide. And now if we save this artwork, it will be half its size. I recommend if you're gonna resize your artwork that you save copies. That way you don't make a mistake and save over your original. I'm gonna undo that change. Go back to Canvas Resize. Making your artwork smaller throws away information, so there's nothing wrong with that. But making your image larger might not necessarily look good. If I make this its maximum size, you can see it does get larger, but it doesn't add any detail. It just makes it look blurry. So you might be able to resize stuff a little bit, but too much is just gonna ruin your image. It's better to start with a larger canvas to begin with and then scale it down if you need to. I'll go back to resize. I'll switch my measurement to inches. We can also constrain the file size. So if I make this four inches wide, then I'm not going to throw away any detail. It'll automatically adjust the resolution. I'll click on OK, go back to resize, set it back to eight, and you can see that resolution changes automatically. So it preserves the amount of resolution or the amount of detail in the image rather than throwing it away. In most cases, this is recommended unless of course you wanna make something smaller in pixel dimensions. You can also see the current size of your artwork and the width and height in pixels, and you can preview the new size after you make that change. 
I'm going to go to Canvas. Let's take a look at Canvas size. This is slightly different. Here you can add pixels to the top, left, bottom, or right. This would be like if you took another canvas and you nailed it to the top of the canvas. So let's say we take a whole other canvas that is 500 pixels wide and we nail it to the top. You can see my canvas extends 500 pixels. So the overall dimensions of the document have expanded. I'll do an undo, go to canvas, canvas size, and let's just add 10 pixels all around the edge to create a nice border. Let's go to canvas, rotate canvas. Here we can rotate the canvas, and this is permanently rotating the orientation of the canvas. So this is different than just rotating the view with the rotate page tool. So if I rotate it 180, I flipped it around. I can rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise. I can even do an arbitrary rotation if I wanted to pick a specific angle. But because digital art is made of square pixels, we can't have any diagonal pixels. So although we've angled the artwork, we've also expanded the canvas size to fill that space. We'll do an undo, go back a few steps here. Under rotate canvas, we can also flip the canvas horizontally which can be helpful to look for mistakes, or you might even like the composition better when you flip it, or you could flip it vertical as well. Now again, this is a permanent destructive change should you save your artwork. I'll go ahead and flip everything back by going to File, Revert. Next in the Canvas menu is Tracing Paper. We're gonna save this for the lesson when we deal with cloning. And last in the Canvas menu is Set Paper Color. Let's go ahead and choose a different color for our canvas, like this pink, and I'll go to Canvas, Set Paper Color. Now if I were to hide this artwork, show my canvas, paint on my canvas, and then clear the canvas or use the eraser, the default blank canvas color is this pink. You can also enable the canvas color in the new image dialog using this button here. I'll go ahead and revert this. Next is the layers menu. We're going to skip over the layers menu for now because we're going to talk about layers in its own lesson. Let's dive into the select menu. Here we can select all, which puts a selection around the entire canvas. This can be useful for clearing the canvas as we've looked at earlier. We can select a none, which just deselects that selection. The shortcut for that is Control D. I'll create a rectangular selection. I'll create a new layer and I'll fill it with Control F. As you can see, I've filled inside the selection, but if I go to select invert selection, I select red and I fill now I'm filling outside the selection because I've turned the selection inside out. I'll deselect that selection. And then if I want to reselect it, I can choose reselect. It's kind of like a redo for selections. I can also float part of a layer, which creates a layer floating object. We used this earlier and it temporarily separates the pixels on a layer from each other. So you can move them around. And then if you wanted to, you could recombine them. I'll go ahead and revert this again. Let's create another rectangular selection in the center of the canvas. Let's go to select and we'll invert it. And we'll go to select feather. Let's feather this by 30 pixels and that will soften the edge of the selection. Now if I create a new layer and I fill that with white, you can see it creates a really nice vignette and that vignette's on a separate layer. I'm gonna do a few undos to before I feathered that selection. We can also go to select and here we can widen, contract, smooth, and add a border. But in order to do that, we need to enter the selection adjuster mode. And now we can widen the selection, which just expands it by a few pixels, or we can contract it to contract it by a few pixels. We can smooth it out if it's too rough, and we can add a border. The next menu is the effects menu. Here we can access the fill command. I'll create a selection to fill. You can hold shift to constrain your selection to a perfect circle or shift and alt to make a perfect circle that scales from the center. This works for the rectangular selection tool as well. I'll make a circle here and let's go to the effects menu and choose fill. We can fill with the current color. That's whichever color is selected. We can reduce the opacity of that fill. We can preview the fill and we can click on okay to fill that selection. I've added that fill to this entire layer, but if I wanted to, I could undo, create a new layer, and fill that selection on a completely separate layer. Then I could move that layer around. Let's go to Effects. Here we can see our most recently applied effect. Let's look under the Tonal Control menu, and we can adjust the colors. I'll click on Reset. We can desaturate it or add saturation. 
We can make it darker or lighter by changing the value, and we can shift the hue. We can transform the colors using uniform color, or we could choose paper to apply a paper texture as we're changing these colors. The paper texture is whichever texture we have selected. I'll delete this layer and go to this layer that has some artwork on it. We could go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, choose Image Luminance, and here we can adjust the image based on the luminance values. It gives us a different result than Uniform Color does because it looks at the light and the dark in the image. We can also choose Original Luminance. This is going to use a pattern which we'll learn about later. In order to change that pattern, we'll need to go to the Pattern Pens, and here we can choose a different pattern. Let's say something like this gravel. Now if I undo, and I go back to Tonal Control, choose Original Luminance, then you can see what that's done. This gives you kind of an interesting effect. Let's go back to Effects, Tonal Control. There are some image adjustment effects to equalize your image, add brightness and contrast, and invert it. I'm not going to go through all these effects. You can feel free to experiment with them. We can also apply lighting. If you want to simulate lighting on your canvas, this is your light and you can move it around. You can change the direction of it. You can play with the brightness and the distance and other properties. And when you click on OK, it's going to make your canvas lighter or darker. Now, I don't think this is the best way to get this effect. You could actually do the same thing using layers and then it wouldn't be destructive because once I've applied this, it's applied that lightness and darkness to my entire canvas. So I'll undo that. Let's look at Apply Surface Texture next. This is also a destructive edit, so you'd be better off doing this on a separate layer, which we'll look at in just a bit. This simulates a surface texture, so we could use something like paper or something that looks more woven. We can apply a surface texture using paper, 3D brush strokes, which is based on your pattern that you have selected. Or we could choose Image Luminance, which looks at the image luminance and combines it with your paper texture or original luminance. You can also play with the softness if you want to soften it up or have it be sharper. You can invert it. You can control the amount of depth and make it more shallow or deeper. And there's other settings you can play with. You can also change the direction of the light and add multiple lights. And you can move this around as much as you like to adjust the lighting. If you accidentally add too many lights, you can reduce one. There's also simple lighting where you can just change the lighting this way. We'll click on OK, and now we have a nice surface texture. But again, this is a permanent change, so you may not want to do it this way. Another way you could do it is you could undo, create a new layer, we'll call it Texture, and we'll fill it with a neutral gray that's right about in the middle here. When we click on this swatch, we can actually make it exactly 128, 128, and 128. Now if I go to Effects, Apply Surface Texture, I'll apply it to that. Then I'll change the composite method to overlay. That makes the gray color disappear and all you see are the light and dark values. So that gives us the surface texture on a separate layer. And if we go through and paint behind our surface texture, then we're not going to cover it up. We're only going to paint behind it. As you can see, it's separate. You can also reduce the opacity of it if you want it to be more subtle. And you can combine it with multiple surface textures. Let's say we'll keep this paper one here you could also select your eraser, use a soft edge eraser with a pretty low opacity. And with a large brush, you could erase some of that as well if it's too harsh in some areas. And this will just help it look more natural and not too overbearing because adding something like this should only be added if it helps the piece. Otherwise, it'll just make it look worse. But see, something like that is pretty subtle. It makes it feel a little more natural and organic, but it's not so strong that it distracts from the beauty of the painting. If we go back to the effects menu under surface control, there are some other various effects that you can play with. I don't find these to be essential to my digital painting workflow, so that's why I'm skipping over them, but you can try them out. Focus will let you blur elements of your painting. So if I revert this really quick, create a new layer, fill it with a white circle like this, and I want that edge to be softer, I can go to effects, focus, soften, and here you can see I can soften the edge just by using a Gaussian blur. So I can put in a nice sun like that and then move it wherever I want. There's a smart blur as well, which you can experiment with. This is more useful for photo retouching. You can also sharpen the edges of pixels. 
And then finally, there's Esoterica, which we'll just skip over. This is an auto Van Gogh effect that you can apply to your artwork if you like. The last menu is Window. And here we can zoom in and zoom out of the canvas just like we can with the magnifier. We can also zoom to fit. You have all these controls in the properties bar for the magnifier, by the way. There's center image, fit screen, 100%. So zoom to fit is the same as fit screen. Actual size is 100%. And that's just yet another way to navigate. We already know what the layouts can do. We looked at those earlier. You can save layouts and delete layouts. You can quick switch between layouts by using this toggle layout button. And then here's the different layouts. We looked at hiding the application UI with the tab key and shift tab earlier, so we'll skip over those. Here you can show and hide the various palettes. For example, there's the command bar. This gives you quick access to save, undo and redo, and shortcuts to resize your brush and change the opacity. We can hide that by disabling it. There's also a photo painting panel, which we'll look at later. And the remaining options in the window menu we've already looked at, so we can move on to the help menu. Here we have a quick start guide, which will help you get started with Corel Painter Essentials 8, but you don't need that because you got me. You can also get tech support, restore any purchased brush packs or content that you may have lost when you reinstalled Painter or got a new computer. And if we go to messaging settings, here you can turn off these pesky notifications that pop up, although these do give you announcements for sales, which could be useful if you plan to upgrade to the full version of Painter. You will want to automatically download and install free product updates. That's always recommended. And if you don't want any offers here, you can just turn off the tray messages. There's also help topics. You can browse all of the help topics. It's even searchable. So if you're looking for something that I didn't cover or you just want to learn more about it, check out the help. There's tutorials and painter videos that can supplement your knowledge as well. I also have tons of free tutorials on my YouTube channel. You can check for updates manually here. You can access the welcome book. And if you go to about Curl Painter Essentials, here you can find your serial number in case you ever need it to reinstall Painter. So I'd recommend writing this down and keeping it somewhere safe and definitely don't share it with anybody. You can also see the version you're using, which could be helpful. So that's it for the menu bar. You can also find some of this stuff in the contextual menus. Those are accessed by right-clicking, so I can right-click on the desktop. And because I have the zoom tool selected, there's some options here. But if I selected the brush tool and I right-click, I get different options that relate to the brush. Or if I right-click on the layers panel, I get layer commands, and so on. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at setting some of the preferences and customizing Corel Painter. That's coming up next.